Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Wolf's Den today. Today we have Mr. John Drakes into the studio. John, how are you doing today? Great, thanks, Wayne. Thanks so much for coming in. Now, John, uh, you're uh, the fiction of or I guess you're a master of Newfoundland and Irish music, and you do a little country in there, too. Yes, we do. Uh, as a matter of fact, we play the button accordion. We have a band, Lukey's Boat, and uh, when we go out to perform, we play a variety of Irish, Newfoundland, and uh, and country music, you know, give the old variety, right? So there's myself and another chap, uh, Ray Richards. He's, you know, just the two of us, right? Just the two of you, yep. and you go out and you do quite a few shows at the Newfoundland Club and other little venues around town as well? Yes, we play the Legions and, uh, you know, uh, actually a little place in Truro called the Air Force Club in Truro and that, and uh, for anniversary gigs and whatever you like, you know. And we in July, we play in Stewiak. For a big outdoor concert oh, down there. Oh, you do the new V-Fest down there, yeah. Yes, great yep. time. Yep. Yes, it is a great time. I'm yes. doing a festival just down the road there this year that's having a new V-Fest. Ah, cool. Down in Pembroke. Great. Yeah, now, John, uh, we were talking before we came on the air here. How did you get started in all this uh, craziness called music? Well, Wayne, I guess we're all, always, we're all usually influenced by our parents, eh? And uh, when I was about five years old, uh, I mean, my brother, I mean, my dad, well, he used to play for dances, and... Uh, he bought us a little five-key accordion and uh, learned to play that. Then uh, when we were eight, nine years old, uh, I guess we graduated from a little five-key to a, a honer, a honer of a button accordion. And uh, so anyway, we, you know, we played that. Actually, the thing is with me, I, I stuck to the accordion, and my brother, he, like, even though he plays accordion, he, he, his guitar was his thing, eh? So, but uh, anyway, we, we, growing up, we played a, quite a bit of music and... Where my dad played for dances, one thing the other. I, you know, of course, he had a big influence on us. So, how old were you when the first time you got up on a stage for a dance or something? Well, when my dad used to play for dances up in the thing place called the lodge, we say, right? I mean, there was no uh, acoustics, like you know, one thing the other. Eh? And uh, I used to sit right beside my dad, dangling my feet on this and the and the big stools there up there in the, you know, the bench and the, just sort of. Uh, watching him play and, and that. So I guess when I was about 14, 15 years old, I guess I played for my first dance, I guess. Okay. That and was now, a big thing. Um, the accordion, was it? Was that what your dad played? or? Yeah, my dad, like he used to, he used to fish on the, uh, on the long liners, like, you know, and era in, up in Nova Scotia before he moved back to Newfoundland. And, uh, and he, he actually used to play the accordion, even on the boat sometimes, like, you know. And they all got together and gave him accordion and, and, and that. So, uh, but uh, when he came home, like, he, you know, he, he used to play for quite a, few, quite a few dances, you know. And so that's where you got your start. And again, into listening to all that great Newfoundland music, all them jigs and reels. Oh, yeah, And the kitchen time. parties. Yes, big time. And you know what? And another influence, too, was uh, you take at the time when Harry Ibs. You know, from Bell Island. I mean, he brought Newfoundland music to the mainland, and uh, you know, and that. So uh, it was great, a good thing. And I think they, he influenced a lot of people were influenced by Harry Hibbs at the time. Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Harry Hibbs because when I was a small boy, um, we had very, very little music in our house. Uh -huh. I mean, hard to believe for uh, a, a Newfoundland mother and a Nova Scotian father, but neither one of them played, and and music was never a big thing in our house. Yep. But there was a couple albums in the house, and one of those albums was Harry Hibbs. Wow. Yes. And uh, Bob White, I think, was the other one. Uh-huh. But there Great. was lots of traditional Newfoundland music in our house. Oh, for sure. And uh, when there was music, it was Newfoundland music. Yeah. And so I grew up on it as well. But... Um, the accordion, you don't hear of a lot of people that, I mean, in Newfoundland, I suppose they do, but yes. here, there's not a lot of people that play it, and it's a beautiful instrument, and it's a sin that it's um, it's not played as much as it is. Yeah, that's true, Wayne. I mean, one good thing about it now, you see a lot of young kids, you know, because they, they say that the button accordion in Newfoundland is what the fiddle is to Cape Britain and Nova Scotia, PEI, New Brunswick, you know. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's good in a way because a lot of young kids are, are playing the button accordion. But uh, here in Nova Scotia, like, you know, a lot of uh, musicians have passed on and uh, there's only a handful of, of uh, accordion players that play the accordion. Who I know was Freeman Walters, Avery Strickland, and myself, and there's Jenny McCauley, you know, a lady down the South Shore. So, uh, very And it's, it's too bad, too, because, I mean, I've heard some rock bands that have button accordions in them, and they sound excellent. Oh, my God. 
fantastic, like, you know. I think even Joe, Mur- Joe Murphy. Uh, uh, yes. He, uh, I think he plays some kind of Cajun accordion. Yes, I think he does. So I think you're right. Too, yep. Even though it's blues, right? It's yes. Fantastic. So, I mean, it's beautiful how instruments can transcross over all kinds of different genres of music and still sound just as good in one as they do in another. Oh, yeah, big time. Yes, for sure. Now, um, John, you've got... You brought in today, you brought in three CDs, John's Favorites, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. Uh-huh. And uh, you're a hard-working musician. You know, we've got um, one, one CD's got 27 songs on it. Yes. You know, I get guys coming in here with EPs with five songs on them. Yep. And um, and you got one CD that's, you know, got 27 songs. Overkill, maybe. But well, uh, I don't know. And then I was watching some of your videos. You're very photogenic, and you are yep. you got a lot of videos. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Yeah, uh, I guess, you know, when you have your own recording studio, uh, you know, you got more opportunity to probably put more songs on a CD. And to me, I believe that, you know, if you're, 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 to me, if you're playing 20 bucks, paying 20 bucks for a CD, you know, so what? You got 27, 28 numbers on it. At least you get a bigger bang for your buck. Well, yeah, you know, you, you know yeah. I mean, at least you're getting, yeah, if you're paying $20 and you're getting 27 songs, that's better yeah. than paying $20 and getting seven. Yeah. And not to discredit people that get 12 numbers on their, on oh, their no. CD, which no, is great, no. like, you know, eh? but uh, I guess everyone to their home, in a way, in that regards. But uh, back to the videos, uh, yeah, like, you know, today with the technology that we have today that, you uh, you know, more people are apt to put a lot of stuff on Facebook and uh, videos, what have you, right? So, yes. uh, you know, if you're musically inclined, why not share it with uh, your Facebook friends? friends exactly. Like well, we're going to listen to a couple of songs off of your number one favorites, your first favorites album. We're going to listen to a cut called My Lovely Irish Rose, and then we're going to listen to another song called The Labrador Rose. Yes, great. Yep. So now these are songs, obviously you've been playing these for a good many years. Good many years. Like The Labrador Rose was written by Dick Gardner from Labrador, a okay. wonderful performer, and uh, and my lovely Irish Rose. That's traditional; it's been around for quite a while. I think Ari Ibs, it was one who made it popular, you yes. know, and that. So, uh, you know, some certain numbers sort of stick, and uh, you know, which is great. Excellent. Well, we're going to listen to my lovely Irish Rose and the Labrador Rose right here on CIOE, your community radio station, ninety-seven point five. A winding river winds its way up to an Irish home Where we mingle there to the cashes lean Where across the green grass grows Where the spinners sparkle to the current Where the river gently flows Where I bid farewell to my own sweet girl I love Irish rose Oh, don't be gone The pride of all I never shall forget Cabins there beyond compare I think I see them yet I'd rather stray by the old mill way Where the path so green does grow on a summer's night when my heart's been light For my lovely Irish rose
for another's dream For the rest of my life I will stay here beside you Oh Labrador Rose, you are one of the In the flower I saw the face of my darling It's been and his perfumer smiled Missed him off the rose When the body so slender As it reached out for life From the rich mountain soil Oh, Lambertor Rose You're the fairest of flowers And you blossom and grow By the cold northern stream For the rest of my life I will stay here beside you Back here in the Wolf's Den today with Johnny Drakes. John, um, you've been doing this for a good long time. You came mm -hmm. over from Newfoundland and uh, you were going to go teach. Yeah, I had a teacher's position wait for me in Labrador. And uh, actually, I came up here in the July and August months to kill some time. It's been with my brother and uh, got up here. And as a matter of fact, I enjoyed the sights and sounds of beautiful Nova Scotia, a big town of Halifax, a big city of Halifax, I should say. And um, got involved with music, met my wife up here, and um, I guess, you know, uh, I decided to stay. And uh, I didn't Never did make it to that teaching job? No, and I feel bad because, I, regrettingly, I got a, of course, rightly so, I got a nasty letter from the school board. But, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's, you know. That's, that's that the it. way it goes. Your life yes. is your life. you got to do what uh, what leads you. That's for sure. Yep. So yeah. you came up here and you uh, you got involved in the music scene as soon as you got here? Yep. It used to be a Newfoundland club on English Street. And it's run by Jack Pelly, Lake Jack Pelly, years ago. and uh, Had a great radio show for years. Yes, a great radio show for years and that. So, uh, so I mean, the music had a big influence on me up here, you know, and uh, first time being in, in Halifax, you know. So uh, that was a big thing for me. And what year and, was that? Oh, uh, this was, uh, uh, I think, in 70, 19, uh, 1973, I believe. So the music business was going pretty good there. Here yeah, then. even before even before I came up here. Like, yeah. You know, I guess the Newfoundland Club, that was uh, on the go for years. Like, eh? and then, the old uh, Buffalo Club on North Street, do you remember that? Did you ever play there? Big time, yes. yes. A few my gigs mother, down there. My mother and father were members there for years. and. Wow. The, the White End sign and all yep. of those clubs at one time every weekend. There was a hoot nanny somewhere. The old for sure. And the old Big Legion time. down by the by the Commons. I, I yeah. uh, when I turned of age, I went to a few hoot nannies there, but I oh, heard about an yeah. awful lot of them from my parents. Oh yeah, Scotia Legion. Eh? Yeah, the yes, old Scotia Branch yes, Legion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My parents were members there as well. So yeah, and uh, going back to Newfoundland, I suppose lots of kitchen parties growing up. Oh, yeah, big time. Well, it used to be a club home, eh? And, and uh, you know, the community is love that the Kumasco box here at Cove, but there's only about five or six little communities that uh, no distance apart. Uh, but they used to have a club there, down there in uh, the little community of Blorham and, 
and then and outside of um, St. Jack's, you know, you used to go down there and play at the clubs more so. And uh, yeah, some kitchen parties too as well. So now, did you meet your wife here, or did you meet her in Newfoundland? I met my wife up here. As a matter of fact, met my wife down in the Newfoundland Club, <laughs> English Street. Now, how funny is that? A girl from Buren, yep, or in that area, yes. from Marystown, Buren area, down uh-huh. in that in the Buren Peninsula. Yes, and you're not far away from there. Where you're from Fortune Bay. Fortune Bay, across you know, across the bay. Yeah, yeah. Everybody thinks Fortune and Fortune Bay are the same place, but they're actually Confusion. not. That's right. I mean, you go by water, nautical miles, by twenty. Give or take, miles yes. across, right? But I mean, you have to drive stretch, would be maybe like a five or six hour, five or six hour drive, eh? Oh my, yeah, if you had to drive it. Yes. Easier to take the boat. Yes, you're right. Much easier to take the boat over. Big time, yeah. But yeah. that's funny now. So you uh, you came here and you met your wife here. Yes. At, yeah. at the Newfoundland Club. Well, where, Newfoundland. where's a better place to meet a Newfoundlander than at a Newfoundland Club? Well, like, you know, in Newfoundland Club, you're saying a home away from home, right? Yes, exactly. You know? But I had, uh, I, boy, I tell you, you know, in the crowded club, you know, I, I, I saw this young lady sitting there with her, which was my wife, and I, I got to go and give her a dance. And every time I go and try to give her a dance, be another chap would get up and give her a dance. So, ah. but anyway, I finally succeeded. You finally got there, and <laughs> and and you got the last dance. That's oh yes, big. You time. got the last dance. Last dance. Right? There you go. That's the important one. It doesn't matter how long you wait to get it. Well, uh, you know, I've seen some amazing things down Newfoundland Club, too. I've seen one time a guy go up and pull uh, the bass player out of the dory. It used to be a dory for a stage, eh? Yeah. The guy was playing in the dory and that, and uh, I don't know. One guy went up one night and just pulled this guy right out of the dory, right? Was he making eyes at his wife or something, or...? Uh, well, could have been. I don't know. You're not hey, really sure. You just all you know is you've seen a bass player come and flying out of the door. Yes, for sure. But, uh, I mean, normally it was pretty quiet down there, eh? And, yeah. And, uh, you go in there, if you were a stranger, I guarantee you, before you walked out, that uh, you weren't, weren't a well, stranger. Well, I'm sorry, but anywhere as there's a group of Newfoundlanders, if a stranger walks in, he's going to get accepted. Oh, no Unless doubt. he's a real jerk. Oh, for sure. You yeah, know, I mean, there's no sure. there's no kinder and more gentle and more giving and yep. open people than Newfoundlanders. I always tell yep. people, if you're going to Newfoundland and you're going to stop and ask for directions, make time. You make sure you got time for lunch. Yes. Because they're not going to give you the directions until they feed you. No doubt. Because I know as soon as they look at you, Newfoundlanders have this in, uncanny ability to yeah. be able to look at people and say, you're hungry. Yeah, that's you right. You need to be fed. And you know what? And being fed, you better make sure you got three uppings, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you've got to make sure you got lots of room because we're not letting you out the door until no, you can't no, walk. No way. You know. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. We're going to listen to a couple more songs here. Now, this is off of your latest CD. Uh-huh. And this is favorites number three. Right. And we're going to listen to a song for Newfoundland yep. and an Irish polka medley. Right. Now, when I was a young man, I'd get right excited about that because I knew I could get up on the floor and dance. Yes. Now I'd be running for the bathroom so I wouldn't have to dance. <laughs> but since, you know, so we, since you mentioned the Irish polka medley, like the polka and the jig, like, you know, there's a distinction between two. Right? Oh, there's a big, big difference. Because in Newfoundland, you go to Newfoundland, now I'm not saying they can't dance. Like, you know, the kid brothers dance that polka, like yeah. the, the, the hop, they call yeah. it, right? Well, up here, like, you know, for dancing, we play a lot of polkas, right? Uh, you know, and... Uh, but Newfoundland, you got to play. You went in there and play for a dance. You got to play jigs. They like to the stop her down ones. Eh? Reels, you got yeah. to. Yeah. Yep. Because the polkas, I mean, they're nice to listening to for listening, but they're not sort of dancing music for, for Newfoundland. folks in Newfoundland, right? Yep. And, I, and I'm sure that some can do the can do the hop too, right? But but uh, more so, the jigs are more more, you know, popular. Ah, you got to love the Newfoundland jigs and reels. Oh, for I sure. can smell the salt beef cooking now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to listen to a couple of songs off this album. We're going to listen to Song for Newfoundland, and we're going to listen to the Irish Polka Medley. And now, again, both of these songs are good traditional songs, and uh, get up and dance. Get up and dance. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you got nothing better to do, you're sitting in your living room, dance like nobody's looking. You can listen to Song for Newfoundland and Irish Polka Medley right here from Mr. Johnny Drakes on CIOE, your community radio station. She's a rocky isle in the ocean And she's pounded by wind from the sea You might think that she's rugged and cold But she's own sweet home to me She's bordered by inlets, tickles and sounds 
Reaches by combs and by bays She soothes your vision As you sail round the shores With a nature that greens mountain grays And the houses lie scattered Among the rocks in the cold Trimmed with always green, yellow and blue In quilling a fogo And the little horses Fortune from river for news It's a rocky island in the ocean And she's pounded by wind from the sea You might think that she's rugged and cold But she's home, sweet home to me Been tortured for centuries, her story's untold She struggled with fortunes unknown Made beer by the glaciers and he scraped her to the bone Taking soul to make grand bank shows She's been battered for eons of the cold biting wind Showing rocks to soft beaches of sand And carving her face and giving us a place That we knock on Newfoundland She's a rocky isle in the ocean and she's pounded by wind from the sea You might think that she's rugged and cold But she's home, sweet home to me The ocean surrounds her, it gives and it takes Like shepherd, lion and lamb The pounding and grinding is a constant reminding Of the forces that follow the town from the fury of the blizzard on a cold winter's night To the quiet of a warm summer's day All hardships forgotten, old debts all repaid With a day on a quiet, peaceful bay In the rocky isle in the ocean And she's pounded by wind from the sea you might think that she's rugged and cold, but she's home, sweet home to be. She's a rocky isle in the ocean, and she's pounded by wind from the sea. You might think that she's rugged and cold, but she's home, sweet home to be. You might think that she's rugged and cold.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've kind of made the den a little bit of a newfie eyes room today. We got Mr. John Drake's in the room with us. John, uh, great to have you. Um, you keep yourself busy, and uh, we were just talking in the break there that uh, life has taken a little bit of a change. You have a couple of grandkids now. One's six or seven, but the other one's coming up to a year old. Yes, Wayne, big time. Yeah, he'll be uh, one year old at the end of uh, April. A little grandson, Ethan, and... Uh, and Nolan, it'll be uh, seven years old at the end of July. Boy, that changes your life, doesn't it? Big time, buddy. Yes, you know for sure. Little grandkids. Yep, you're right. Uh, it's new face, a new phase in our life. Our life for sure. Yes, it um, it kind of makes everything worthwhile now, doesn't it? You, uh, you look back and you think of all the trials and tribulations and the struggles that you went through. Yep. You know, raising your own children, and yep. now they're raising their children, and what a what a beautiful thing to see that is. Yep. Big, uh, big time for sure, Wayne. Yeah, you know it's, uh, you know I guess everyone got to pay their dues when they're working. I mean it's it's part of life and make a livelihood and uh, we enjoy doing what we're doing. And once we're able to retire and we we enjoy retirement because we were, remember off the air we were discussing the fact that we're more busier now, uh, you know, retired just, as opposed to when we were working. Eh? Well, that's it. Like what what did you ever do when you were working? How did you ever get stuff done? Well, you often wonder, like you know, because you come home and you have a supper and then. Then it seemed like next morning you're up and back to work again. Eh? Yeah. But uh, but now I find like that I'm really I play hockey, with you know with the music and uh, one thing the other, uh, you know, and I work it at the gym, down at the gym and that. So uh, besides uh, you know with the grandkids, one thing the other and and that. So uh, you know keep keep fairly busy and that and doing things in life that we really enjoy doing. Well, and you know, and that's the name of the game. Money is not the end all to beat all. For sure, buddy. Yeah, that's you true. You know, no I um, I would rather have a pocket full of memories, good good memories, yeah. than a pocket full of cash. And I know Big some time. people would say, "Oh, that's crazy," and you're yeah. and you're lying. Yeah. But that's you know what, money can't buy you, you know, a hug. Money no. can't buy you an ear no. to talk to. I mean, sure, you can go out and pay somebody to listen to you and that, but yeah. money is not the answer. I'm sure that you've found that your life is much more uncomplicated and much more enjoyable now that you're not working. Oh, for sure, Wayne. Like, you know, you got more time with one another and with your grandkids. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, life just, just goes so quickly by. Like, you know, and uh, it's good. Like, you know, you don't have to be rich and a lot of money like you indicated to uh, really enjoy life. As long as you've got your health, you know, I mean, hey, what else can you worry about, right? I mean, that's the main thing, right? Well, that's just it, you know, and some of us, you know, we don't even have our health. We have no. issues and, and stuff, true. but I'm still going to live every single day of my life the best way that I can and do do the, as much as I can in it. Big time, yep. Because it's um, it's the real deal. This isn't a rehearsal. We're not going to get to do this again. No, for sure. Well, you know, according right. to some, anyway. Yep, that's true. You know, yep. so I'm going to take advantage of it, and then I know... I. I know talking to you that you're you're grabbing it by both horns and just going. Oh, yeah, big time, right? I mean, uh, we enjoy what we're doing, and, and like I said, I mean, the band thing, that's, that's the thing that myself and Ray Richards, uh, you know, we, we do that. Uh, we go out and perform and, uh, and get the gigs. We get a call coming in. We don't go after the gigs no more, uh, but uh, just the fact that, you know, we're pretty well known around the city of Lukey's Boat and that, so... Uh, you know, we get a few gigs, food calls here and there, and uh, whether it be anniversary or what have you, like in a retirement party, uh, we we just do that. And um, and the guy that the chap that plays in the band with me, uh, Ray Richards, he's a fantastic singer. He sings the Irish stuff, and uh, you know, wonderful. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Well, and how long have you two guys been doing this together? I would say, but with 22 years now. Uh, myself and Ray, because Jimmy Sardi was in the band with us, and uh, Jimmy was a wonderful musician. Yes, you know, he was and indeed. That, and uh, Jimmy passed on, and and you know we we actually traded a bass player, but uh, didn't work out. So me and Ray decided to continue as a you know, as a duo. As, as a duo, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it must be awful hard to to try to find that chemistry again. That's the key word. Uh, you know, yeah. when when somebody's when you're used to looking over your shoulder and knowing exactly what's going to happen, yeah, for sure. And yeah. and it takes so long f to get that kind of a rapport again. Sometimes it's just better to just move on. Yeah, for sure, Wayne. Yeah, that's true. But you know, you say chemistry because uh, you know, and not that the bass player we tried it wasn't any good. He was a fantastic bass player, right? But I don't know. Maybe like over the years with three of us, uh, we had that chemistry because. Um, 
Jimmy would do the harmony, I harmony, Ray would do the low harmony, and I, I'm one much person for doing harmonies because I, you know, it takes talent for that. Do you used to call me the harmony thief? I used to steal, <laughs> you used to steal their harmonies, harmonies, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you know, as a duo, you're doing great, and um, I love your music. I love your accordion music, and I, and I just, well, it Thanks, takes buddy. me back home. For sure, buddy. is Thank what you. it does for me, you know. And now we're going to go to your second favorites album here, your mm -hmm. Johnny Drake's Newfoundland and Labrador, John's favorites, and this is off the second CD. Right. And the first song we're going to listen to is called "Gray Foggy Day," mm -hmm. and then we're going to listen to "No, It's Not Love." Yep. Now, uh, anything you want to say about either one of those? Oh, uh, "Gray Foggy Day" was uh, was written by Yiddy Coffee. A uh, very popular musician. He's been around for a good many years. And he writes his composer. He writes all of his songs and uh, comes to over to Flan, You know, I think every every summer. And that, yes. And uh, well liked. You know, and that. So uh, he's you know wonderful wonderful musician and songwriter. Uh, no, it's not love. I think it's a song that was written by uh, uh, I would say uh, Hank Snow, but it's uh, written by. Uh, uh, Hank Williams. Hank Williams. As a matter of fact, yeah. Yep. And uh, catch the little number. I really like it. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Gray Foggy Day and No, It's Not Love by Mr. John Drakes right here at CIOE 97.5, your community radio station. <laughs>
I needed you Holding on to me like I held on to you We still don't have what you and I once had It's not bad No, it's not love Not like ours was It's not love But it keeps love From driving me mad And I don't have to wonder Who she's at It's not bad I turn to her When you leave me alone Sometimes even when You're here but you're still gone She's slowly changing What you leave so sad It's not bad No, it's not love Not like ours was It's not love But it keeps love From driving me mad And I don't have to wonder who she's had not love, but it keeps love from driving me mad, and I don't have to wonder who she's at, no it's not love, but it's not bad. Glad to have you back in the Wolf's Den, ladies and gentlemen, with Mr. John Drake's in here today. John, uh, we were just talking in the break. You've got some stuff coming up this summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, if people wanted to find out where you're at and what you're doing, how could they do that? Well, if they want to, they can give me a call at 902-864-4441. Uh, usually, you know, or, uh, or they can email me at, at jsdrakes at hotmail. Dot com. All right. You know, and then, uh, although we are, yes, we tomorrow night we're at uh, the Air Force Club in, in Churro. And Saturday night, uh, coming weekend, we're at the Newfoundland Club. Excellent. Glad to hear it. So you yeah. do have some stuff coming on, and you're going to be at the big Newfie Fest this summer in Stewiak. In Stewiak, yep. Riverside uh, Park, through, I think July 7th and 8th. And uh, we play Friday night and and Saturday afternoon matinee, and then you got the Oliver Mort boys. Uh, on uh, from uh, I think till uh, eight thirty I think to twelve, I think. You know, the Isle of Mork boys. Yeah, another good old Newfoundland another band. Another band, band, and actually we're Lukey's boat, of course. Yeah, we're going to be there. You know, yes. And, uh, now, um, if people wanted to pick up your CDs, where could they do that? Uh, usually, well, we usually take CDs at you know where we play and that, and uh, you know they can get purchase CDs there or. Uh, and sometimes we get a call at home, you know, but normally uh, we don't put much emphasis on selling CDs, only when we go out and play, like, you know, Wayne A. Okay, so you don't have them in any stores or anything like that? No, we don't. Uh, we, as a matter of fact, we do in St. John's, like, you know, at Fred's Records in St. John's and that, okay. O'Brien's Music Store in St. John's, eh? All right, well, and maybe that. we'll have to try to hook you up with a couple of radio record stores around here to put a yes. few in. Yes, 
As a matter of fact, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but ladies and gentlemen, you can get them at either one of the addresses or the phone number that John just gave you. For sure. And if you really need them and you can't find them, just give us a call here at the station and we'll make sure that we hook you up with John and you can get your CDs through him so you can contact yeah. me here at, at CIOE. Yeah, excuse me, Wayne. The, the, the correction on that, the number I indicated there, no, it's not love. Um I said it was Hank Williams, but uh, it's the late and great uh, Merle Haggard. As a yes, matter of fact, and my, uh, uh, I'm sorry about that. But, that's uh, yeah, all right. He, uh, he was the one that wrote that, uh, no, it's not love. And uh, it's too bad about Merle Haggard. It's sad. And it's an, yes, it is too bad about Merle Haggard. We seem to be losing them every day. Oh, big time, you know. Icon, eh? Yeah, and I hear one of the Van Zant boys is, is sick as well. I wow. don't think it's Ronnie, but I think one of the Van Zant boys is sick. And, wow. Yeah. And Willie's getting up there. And Oh, Willie, yes, sir. He's getting up there. You know, he's been around for quite a while. Yes. And, Wonderful uh, performer. We're going to really miss Merle, that's for sure. I, oh, I know s I have several friends that um, he was a major, major influence in their oh, lives. big time. And one guy I know for sure that Merle Haggard was his hero. Yes. And uh, the music industry is getting a little bit quieter every day. Oh, big time, right? You can't beat, I mean, the classic singers, I mean, the traditional music, I mean, you know, uh, just today, you know, like, you know, things become more modernized, like, you know, in that day. And, uh, but nice to hear the, you know, the artists from years ago, right? Yes, but it's also great, John, to hear young artists Precisely. playing traditional music yes. and traditional instruments. That's true. We can't forget our young people. No, that's right. No. I mean, I'm all about the young people. Oh, for me, for sure. we're not going to have any music if we don't promote young people. So You're right. I'm glad to see young people picking up the button accordion. I'm glad to see them picking up the fiddle. Big glad time. to see them picking it all up. Yes, I've been watching some young folks since the time they were five and six and first picked up an instrument, and today they're teenagers, and now they're starting to get their own little gigs at, you know, in different little places, and yeah. I love it. Wonderful. And, um, but you know, John, it's because of guys like you. Yeah, I guess, you know, it's great when you can influence someone and, and, and you know, to uh, pick up a musical instrument and encourage them to, to carry on and do what they're doing and, and don't give up. Like, you know, it's, it's great. And, and that's the thing. You never did that. You never gave up. You never quit. And, uh, and we're really glad that you didn't. And I want to thank you, sir, for coming into the Wolf's Den today. And thanks, too, Wayne, for having me. Buddy. And I hope that everybody gets out to see your shows. We're going to listen to, uh, would you mind if I called you Julie and Streets of London to end the show? Mm -hmm. Again, I want to thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for stopping into the Wolf's Den again today. Please come back again next Monday. We'll have another interesting guest on. And be good to each other, be kind, and always, always hug the ones you love. I'm Wayne Snare. This is the Wolf's Den right here on CIOE, your community radio station. You sure are a lonely looking lady, and I sure am a lonely, lonely man. Let's share a drink and dance to some old slow song Tonight we both look like we need a friend But would you mind too much if I just called you Julie? Could you try to understand my needs? Tonight, would you mind too much if I just called you Julie? And you can call me anything you like. so good just lying here beside you making love sure seems to make things right but you and I already know the ending cause we're only two ships passing
sing in the night So would you mind too much If I just called you Julie Could you try to understand my needs tonight Would you mind too much If I just called you Julie If I just called you Julie And you can call me anything you like
Let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London. I'll show you something to make you change your mind.